giving the next talk. Um, uh, so it will be basically about integration push notification with Ruby on Rails. Uh, can I have a show of hands? Like how many, how many of you have actually looked at push notifications for Chrome or Firefox? Okay, so just a couple. Uh, so a bit of background about myself. Uh, so I'm Guo Xiang. I work for Discourse. So Discourse is an open source forum software. Uh, the reason I'm giving, like, basically giving this talk on push notifications is because at this course we're actually betting big on the web, uh, the browser, rather than mobile applications. Uh, part of the reason is, uh, being that we are a small team, we don't have like, the resources to spin up another dev or uh, another iOS or Android team to build web applications. So our view is that browsers will be the future and then you just have to surf like, mobile optimized pages. Uh, but uh, so one of the things that we ran into was basically our users were always asking us like, um, well, you have desktop notifications, what about push notifications? They believe that push notifications drive engagement back to their forum. Uh, so that was when I started looking at uh, push notifications and yeah, so, I, so I wrote a plugin for this course that implements it. Uh, so there'll be a, a lot of code in this talk, uh, but that's, uh, my aim is not for you to understand every single bit of code, it's basically just to show you the glue between the client and the browser. How, um, basically how, how you can work with like, the subscription object that the, the client gives you and how you save it on the model, it's, uh, how you save it on the server itself. Uh, so yeah, so to start, I thought I'll just give a brief demo. If you want, you can actually try it out. I can go to Heroku. Uh, I couldn't use my own domain because I needed, uh, like, to, for push notifications to work, you need HTTPS to enable, and I just didn't want to buy a cert. Uh, so Heroku comes free with it. Uh, yep, so you can try it out. It's warm garden com. Okay, so basically, uh, so this is, I just forked uh, like a real 5 chat demo app. So you can see, uh, let's say if I type on my mobile, okay, then I get a push notification. So what is interesting about push notification, I mean, this is just like a desktop notification, right? It would just still appear. What if I close the browser? And then I send it another message. Yay. Yeah, so someone just sent another one, so I can send yay, and then yay will appear as well. So, so that's, that's, the, like, that's the beauty of push notifications. Uh, on desktop, it's, it isn't as impressive, but on mobile it is, because you start to enable notification on your uh, mobile application itself. Okay, so. So back to the top, uh, there's some, so the code that I'll be showing is basically for, there's, there's some prerequisite. Uh, so in, uh, the supported browsers right now are only Chrome desktop and mobile, 50 and up, uh, Mozilla desktop 44 and up. So Mozilla was, well, Firefox was the first to implement like payload in your push notification, but there's some weird, I mean, they haven't completely implemented it yet. So even on Firefox desktop 44, your browser has to be open. So uh, let's say if I close the browser on Firefox, you won't get any push notification, which is kind of uh, weird. Uh, so mobile hasn't been implemented yet, but it's coming soon. And then the prerequisite is that your site has to be, uh, uh, HTTPS has to be uh, enabled. Okay, so one of the first things that, uh, you need for push notification, or at least in this case, it's just for Google Cloud Messaging. Uh, is that you need to surf like a web manifest. So a web manifest is basically just a JSON file that contains a bunch of settings that um, the browser will read. Uh, it basically gives you like the ability to sort of shape your app. So like on Chrome, uh, I'm not sure how many of you know that you can actually add like a web page to your home screen. So you get an icon. Uh, so like how do you decide what icon to show, what the title of the icon should be? It's actually through this web manifest. Uh, so one way you can do it is you just have a, you just create a hash and then in your controller you render, uh, render JSON to, for that particular action. Uh, and then you set your routes to like a get manifest.json, you point it to your controller, and then in your application.html.yab you actually need to like link it so that the, the browser will be aware of it. So this, this is still um, the pretty like straightforward stuff. Uh, then the second thing that you usually need to do is uh, register a service worker. So push notification is actually built using a couple of, um, well, a couple of different technologies and one of them is like a uh, service worker. 
So what a service worker is, is basically just like a, a script that runs in the background, in, independent of the web page itself. Uh, so even actually, you can clo uh, close your own Chrome browser, and the service worker will see you running. Uh, the, like you can, uh, unless you queue like the process that's running it, then uh, the service worker will, will be will still be running there. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of things that you need to do like on the client side. So the first is actually you need to check whether push notification is supported. So this, I mean, uh, it's just some, all the web, uh, the APIs that are available. You're just checking whether certain methods or functions are available in certain objects uh, to, well, to see whether you can actually support push notification on the, the user's browser. Then the second one is you have to register your service worker. So a service worker is basically, like, like we said just now, it's just a simple script that runs in the background, but then your browser has to know about it somehow. So the API is basically pretty simple, like it's just like nav there's this navigator uh, object that you call service.serviceworker.register, and then you point it to the service worker file that you want it to basically register. Uh, so in this case, it's push desk service worker. Uh, for me, it's push desk service desk worker.js. Later, I'll show you how this uh, script is actually being served from the server side. Uh, then you have to check for a bunch of stuff. So, like you check for permissions. So, whenever you enable push notification, the browser will actually ask you for your permission. Like, do you allow it or do you want to disable it for this web page completely? So, you have to check for that. Then, if the user has de totally denied like the permission to show any form of notification, you just return and then you just forget about uh, everything. Uh, then this whole chunk, you don't really have to worry much about it. But then just uh, that's this. Uh, so once a service worker is ready, right, you can actually fetch a service worker registration. Then from the registration itself, you can there's this uh, object called a push manager, and then you can get your current subscription. So if the if currently there's a subscription available, you uh, so you basically call that and you have a well, you you have a, it returns promise and then you call a then function right. Uh, so what you have to do so this subscription object actually contains all the payload. So in this next. Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, this subscription has to be sent to the server. So I mean, this then you just implement another method that sends the AJAX request. What is interesting is in what what is in the subscription object itself. So the first thing is there's an endpoint there. So for in this case, so uh, different browser will give return you different endpoints. So for Google, it will return you like android.googleapis.com/gcm, which is for Google Cloud Messaging slash send. Then you get this. Entire chunk of uh, well, I call it subscription ID. So basically, this ID is unique to your browser itself, and that is like sort of like your unique identifier for each client's browser. Uh, late, later, this will the ID will be useful in terms of how we extract it and then uh, to send like push notification out. Um, so then there's another um, key here. It's called keys. So before Google Chrome like 50 and below. You could send push notification, but you couldn't send any payload with it. So that was a bit redundant, right? Like, so what you had to do was send the push notification, and then in your service worker, you had to ping, uh, like you had to hit an endpoint on your server to fetch like what notification you want to show. So that was a bit awkward to use. Uh, so right now, um, they implemented payload, but then there were some issues with like, um, well, they didn't implement payload initially because they couldn't figure out how they would encrypt the payload itself. Because now your, your payload is going to go through Google Cloud Messaging, another service that you have to go through. So there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, so there's so within the like key uh, object itself, there's like uh, a bunch of other stuff. So uh, when I first saw it, I was like, uh, like what are they used for? Uh, it's pretty complicated. So uh, even after I read through, uh, so if you want to know more, you can read through about this. I'm not the best guy to tell you about encryption here. I'm just gonna skip past it. But basically, just know that the keys are one is one is basically like a public key that is used to authenticate with the client. The other key is used to basically encrypt your payload, something like that. But if you want to read more, that uh, this this uh, they wrote a blog post that is uh, pretty detailed. If you want to know more, okay. So uh, this one is okay. So it's pretty heavy. Uh, so this is basically your back, uh, your background script. Uh, for push notification, it's pretty standard for um, like most people. So one, so this function here, show no show notification, is basically just like your desktop uh, API actually. So how you how you show a notification like using the browser's API is the same thing. 
Uh, the interesting part is this bit here. Like you can actually add an event listener for a push event. So when you get a push event within the event itself, there's event.data. So that's where your payload is. So with that, you can actually do a bunch of stuff. You don't necessarily have necessarily have to show like a notification. You can actually just do uh, well. It's up to your imagine, uh, imagination what you can do with the payload. But in our case, it's just um, to show a notifica uh, notification. Uh, then there, there are a bunch of workarounds right now with like uh, when you click on a notification. So somehow, if you just show the notification, it doesn't work that well. Uh, so let's say if I don't have this function here, you click on a not notification, it just doesn't bring you anywhere. So you need like another uh, another event here to handle like um, to basically open the the a new tab for the notification itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is an interesting bit. Uh, so so when I first implemented uh, for like. When I first implement, like, how would you serve the push service worker file, your, your background script? My initial idea was just dump it in the public directory, and then you just serve the file, right? But then you lose out on things like uh, uglifying or minifying the JavaScript file. So in the end, what I came up with was actually, you, you have a controller, they implement an action. So in, in this bit, right, um, in, so when you pre-compile your assets in production, you add a digest at the end. But then you'll never know, you, you won't know what the digest is. Right? Uh, what the digest is. And then but in, when you register for uh, service worker, your URL expects this. But then the pre compiled file is push dash service, service dash worker dash digest.js, something like that. So to work around this issue is, so, uh, which is why I created like, um, an action to handle it. So if you're in production, you can actually figure out. Uh, you can actually figure out what the digest. I mean, you don't figure out the digest. You can fetch the exact path of where the pre-compiled file is, and then you can serve it. And then in development, you can actually just call like dot reals dot application dot assets. Then you just find your assets, and then you you actually uh, then you call like render with the, the. So you are basically rendering the whole file, and then you just need to add like a routes endpoint, and then you're done. So the next one is subscribing and unsubscribing to push notifications. So for those that tried out just now, you would have seen like these two buttons. So by default, not everyone likes push notifications. Like even though I implemented it, I actually hate push notifications because they distract you from what you're doing. Like it pops up, it's just super annoying. So you want to have like you want to give the user the ability to choose like do I want push notifications or not. Uh, so how you so basically, these two buttons, they have uh, callbacks on them. Uh, so when you click on it, uh, so this is the subscribe function. So the subscribe function is basically you fetch your service worker registration again, and then you call push manager, and then you subscribe. So th there's this option called user visible true only. So there's actually an option to say that um, for this registration, you expect something to show when it receives a push, me a push message. So let's say if you push to this endpoint, but then no notification show, it will actually throw an error. Uh, similarly, once you have the subscription object, you send it to the server. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a bit more what we'll, how we'll handle the subscription uh, later on. Uh, and then there's this local storage. So I use the local storage to basically store, uh, to basically yeah, store the state of whether the user wants push notifications or, or not. Because the next, uh, the next time you reload your page, you want to uh, be on the right in the right state. Uh, for unsubscribe, the same thing. Uh, you can call the push manager. You get the subscription. Then you can call unsubscribe on it. Then similarly, uh, you add a callback that basically sends um, uh, post uh, post the subscription to the server to unsubscribe. So those are the so that's the client side for subscribing and unsubscribing. Uh, so the like the big thing that you know is just you just have to send that subscription object to the server every time you subscribe or unsubscribe. Uh, in our case, uh, so this is pretty simple. Uh, we, we just get the subscription and then we uh, we pass it to either the Google Cloud Messaging pusher or like there's a Mozilla pusher because um, they sort of handle it differently. Well, actually, subscription and unsubscription hand, they handle it the same way, but then uh, for pushing it's different. So you need sort of like two different classes or service objects to to handle um, push it, uh, pushing of like uh, notifications. And then unsubscribe the same thing, just checking. Uh, basically, from the subscription, right, you can identify which 
service that you use. So, uh, so like just now in the end point, you remember that it starts with like Android.Google API. So you, you check for that and then you know that whether it, it is a like Google subscription or is it a Mozilla browser subscription. Uh, so the thing is, those subscriptions are not, so there's, there's really no recommended way of handling like subscriptions. So that was one thing I realized when I implemented push. Like you've got, to impl uh, you've got to store the subscription somehow because it contains the endpoint for you to post your message to. So eventually what I tried was, well initially what I tried was I w was thinking we just store it in Redis. But then what if you have a lot of users and then you're storing a lot of strings in Redis and that's not so good. Uh, so in the end what I ended up with was you basically store it in the database and then you store it as a JSON format. Uh, so first I start off implementing like a base pusher. It's basically sort of like a factory pattern. You expect certain behavior that uh, from objects that inherit from this class. So the first is like a key prefix is basically to identify is this like a Google Cloud messaging pusher or is it a Mozilla pusher? And then the push um, the push method because like I said um, Google well both handle it similarly but later I'll touch on why we have to uh, why the, the, the push method has to be different. Uh, so in my case, to, so to fetch the subscription of a certain user, uh, it's basically just fetching the push subscription, which is in JSON. Uh, if it's nil, we'll <laughs> if it's nil, we'll uh, initialize it <laughs> as a hash. Because uh, I'm looking at Ted and he was talking about how nil is fed, so now <laughs> I just find it funny. Uh, but yeah, but anyway, and then you and then uh, based on the key prefix, you initialize another hash. Uh, for it to fetch the right subscription. And then for subscribe, right? So this is where the unique subscription ID comes in. So from the endpoint that the subscription object gives you, uh, you can actually extract like the unique ID and then you store it as uh, one of the, like, so one, you store it as an identifier for the subscription object itself. And then, uh, so you're just saving it. Then unsubscribe is basically you just delete it from the hash and then you save the user. And the next part is um, yep, sending push notification. So the thing about, uh, so, you, so I talked about how you had two different keys for encrypting the payload and then authenticating against the client. So there's actually a lot of steps that you have to do in order to encrypt the payload correctly. It was mentioned in the blog post, uh, but when Google wrote the blog post, they only implemented um, like encryption of the payload in Node. So there was nothing for Ruby, but thankfully after a while, uh, this guy came up with web push. So web push basically does the entire encryption for you, and then it sends, and then it sends the post uh, post request for you. Uh, so I'll, I'll basically explain, go through like a bit of the general idea for like a Google Cloud messaging pusher. Uh, so for me, for the key prefix, I use like Google Dash Cloud messaging, just an identifier, and then you have your endpoint that you use to identify like which. Uh, which browser the subscription object belongs to. Uh, this is just, uh, you don't really need to know about this, but basically uh, this is the push method where you have your payload. Uh, the only thing is that you just have to follow the API for, let me try to enlarge this. Okay, never mind. this doesn't respond well to. Uh, okay, so basically uh, the web push basically has a method payload send, so you just give it the endpoint, your message, and then you pass it the encryption keys, and then you have to give your API keys you're using the Google Cloud, Messag uh, Cloud Messaging API. Uh, one of the things to note here is that when a subscription, when if someone manually un uh, unsubscribe from a subscription, let's say if I go, so you can actually go to Chrome internal tools, and then you can just deregister the service worker. So basically the subscription will now no longer be valid. But there's no way right now for you to say, okay, now this subscri uh, subscription object is invalid. Send it to the browser and let the browser know. So what we do here is basically when you send the when you push the notification out, and then if it's uh, if the response is an invalid subscription, uh, you you basically nuke it from the user records. Otherwise, what you end up is every time a new tab is open and a uh, and the user subscribes to a subscription. Uh, you add another record to the hash itself. So you end up with, if you don't delete subscriptions, you end up with a giant hash of like expired subscriptions. So that's one thing that you have to handle. Uh, so the, 
Mozilla push has a different push method because the web push gem right now doesn't only implements it for Google Chrome. So um, whereas for so basically the it when you call like when you call like payload send, you always hit the same endpoint which is the Google Cloud Messaging endpoint. So uh, for Mozilla you have to Firefox you have to do it a different way. You have to manually encrypt it yourself and then you make a request through the same API, just that you have to pass it the right subscription endpoint. So, uh, for, but for Firefox, it's actually a lot easier to implement. For, for Google Cloud Messaging, you have to actually create a new application in like uh, apis.google.com or something. And then you have to you have to create an you register an application with Google, and then you have to get the API key, the API registration ID or something like that. But for Firefox, it's very simple. They, you, they give you the, basically the endpoint to push your message to, and then you just push to it, and then your, your notification will magically appear on your browser. Okay, so then this is just basically a simple like, sidekick job that handles like, the push, pushing of the notification. So what you're doing is basically your payload, you push it, you basically send a post request to either Google Cloud Messaging or Firefox has their own service that helps you push to the browser. So you, you're basically like going through them and then they'll post the message to the browser. Uh, so you, it's best to do it in a background job. Uh, right now I'm just, it's just a quick hack. Like basically anyone that posts in one of the chat rooms now, you're sent to all the other users except yourself. And then, yeah, so then, then in your, like, your message create method, I can just add a method. If the message was saved, I'll just send the push notification out uh, with the relevant payload to the user. Yeah. So actually, uh, so in summary, so I hope you guys get a good understanding of how the client and the server side actually the, the glue between the client and server to get push notifications working. So the first is basically your client will have to register a service worker, which is your background script that runs uh, that has an event listener on the push event, and then you send any subscription to the server so that you'll get the right endpoint to push the message to. Uh, then the use, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's so why I basically explained everything in a line. Uh, yeah. So, any, uh, does anyone have any questions? No? So, this can totally be a separate server from Chrome? Uh, okay, so the problem now is there's only Chrome that is like sort of fully done. Yeah. Like Firefox is half done. Apple, iOS, the Safari doesn't look like they have any plans for it. So, uh, H looks like there are some plans to implement it, but not there yet. So, uh, with Safari, <coughs> what they're doing for Safari is basically just doing a pass to, to the OS notification. Yeah, correct. Because both iOS and OS 10 yeah. have uh, support for push notifications, desktop notifications yeah. slash push notifications. But it's not to the browser, uh, mobile right. browser, right? And, and the browser just basically provides a gateway yep. to that. There is, there, is a, there is a Safari API yep. to, there is a Safari API that lets you push, uh, that lets you do Firefox style push notifications that show up in your notification Correct. area as though they were generated by an app that's running, which Correct. in fact they were. It's an app that just happens to be inside Safari. Yeah. But I guess for push notification, most of the users are interested in what happens on mobile itself. So well, I don't think it works for Safari though. The last time I look at it, it's, it yeah. it's but, but it works the same for iOS and OS 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. The browser is just a gateway to the OS. The the OS, if whether you're talking about whether you're talking about OS 10 or about iOS, you manage those going into the going into the System preferences or settings app. Uh, that's that's in that's in an operating system level feature, not a browser feature. At least according to the code I've been poking mm -hmm. at for the last couple of months. Yeah. Oh, but to answer Vincent's question as well, and another problem right now is that you're depending on like Google running their own yeah, service for yeah. Because like Google runs their own service, Firefox runs their own service. Yeah, so what if they go down it, your? It's 
all balkanized yeah. as hell right now. Yeah. There is no uni there is no unified standard. Correct. And don't look for there to be one for another couple of years, yeah. maybe. Correct. Yeah. So, it's, but um, but I would encourage everyone to do have a look at in, not not just push notification. Uh, service worker itself, uh, it's a pretty new. I wouldn't say it's new, but it's, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that they can uh, do with it. One of it is like you can surf offline. Uh, what if your app is offline, you can still surf like uh, uh, pages that you've you have cached and stuff like that. So it's still pretty interesting. The only thing I would say that's lacking right now is like sort of how would you tie it up with Rails cleanly? I mean, there's there's a gem that do it. So just now I have to do like sort there's of. There's a bunch of gems out there. Yeah. Yeah, so just not have to like do this hack because once you pre-compile, you don't know what the di digest is, so you don't know how to serve the file. There's a bunch of, I mean, I think there's a, there's a couple of gems that do it automatic, automatically for you. I right. uh, could use those, but then I, I just want to like, keep it simple because right now we're just serving one script, not not many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The holy grail of one script that does all is all yeah. the whole isn't going to be here for a while yet. Uh, this is a question. Can you identify specific things? Like if you had a shopping website and the push notification would um, alert the user to a shoe or you know, a specific food that was on sale? Sure. Uh, yep, you can. Yep. So basically you're in control of what to push to the user once they subscribe to it. So it's kind of like, uh, it's actually basically similar to like your mobile no notification. It's just that now the browser enables Enables it. You can do it through the browser now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this uh, no questions? I was, uh, next up, we have Yang Yu. Uh, he's gonna share with us how to use like Git sub modules to manage all your gems. Not all. Just 